Hi, so uh, Mark Otto did this really nice uh, kind of CSS performance uh, investigation um, and uh, looked at some of the differences between the cost of attribute and class selectors, uh, box sizing resets, uh, grid, how, grid techniques of how you're laying things out, float, inline block, table cell, um, and lastly, background, background color. Um, I think uh, uh, the first time he, he did a single run and then later on he added some, he did a number of different runs and averaged them all out together. Um, and I think the conclusions he came to was, uh, well, well, one of the most interesting things was that um, background and background color had seemed to have a significant difference. So I wanted to take a, a closer look at that. So here, um, you see the URL is changing, although visually it's not. Uh, we just have a page laid out with um, background property and background color property. Um, it's the only difference between these two pages, um, and we want to understand if there's a significant cost difference in how they render. So uh, the best thing to do really is open up Timeline uh, and identify the specific operations that are happening in the browser that are affecting this. So I want to check settings, and we do have disabled cache. Shouldn't really matter in this case, but it's nice. I also, in Timeline, I have capture stacks off. This is um, having call stacks. Uh, in this case, we don't need call stacks, and this setting does have about a 11% overhead. So if you want to get really precise and you don't need stacks, um, keep it off. All right, <clears throat> so I'm just going to hit Command-E, Command-R to reload the page, and there's that one. Uh, I'll do the same thing over here. Command-E, Command-R. Ooh, yeah. All right, <clears throat> so uh, you can see already, zoom this in a little bit, that uh, so the blue is we're loading in the network assets of the page, first the HTML, then the CSS, and then we start doing some work. We recalculate the style of the page. We lay it out. We recalc again. Paint and composite. Uh, and you can see, basically, as far as cost is concerned, uh, or mostly the cost of, of rendering this specific page is in recalculating style. Um, over here on this view, uh, same deal. Um, that is, recalc style is where our cost is. So, um, is there a significant difference in these two? Um, now, first up, one thing that I would check is the difference in layout. Um, layout is just physically laying out the boxes um, and just all these little swatches and laying them out next to each other. Um, here we have a layout of uh, 11 milliseconds. Over here we have a layout of OK, 12 milliseconds. Cool. I, I've done this before, and uh, that time I got a layout of, OK, this is 21 milliseconds. Um, on a previous run, I got 30 milliseconds. So this number shouldn't be wildly different. OK, so this is looking a little bit better. My, my numbers are fairly consistent now. Eight. OK, cool. So let's just go with these numbers then. <clears throat> layout shouldn't be changing because there's no difference in how these two pages are laid out. Uh, recalc style in this case is 89 milliseconds. Uh, over here, recalc style is 85 milliseconds. Um, so not a significant difference in, in that specific thing. Recalc style is just identifying basically what the computed style of every visible element on the page is. Um, and painting-wise, we're looking at 3.5 milliseconds plus 3.3 plus a little bit more. So we're basically looking at like seven total. Um, over here, one plus two. A little cheaper um, on background color. Let me see if that changes at all on, a, on multiple runs. Yep. <laughs> all right. So uh, this is a tricky thing, right? Because like a single run, uh, these things are going to vary between, you know, a number of different milliseconds. So, uh, especially when you're trying to benchmark ac across two different techniques, a single run is not going to tell you a whole lot. Um, you're going to want to do like 20 runs, um, throw out throw out outliers, um, and try and compare them a little bit more statistically correct. So tricky here, but um, this investigation would lead me to me to believe that it's not any sort of like massive significant difference between these two. 
Um, I think actually the, the float techniques is going to be a little bit more interesting. Now, there's a difference in kind of the best way that you would pro probably want to measure some of these things. So background, background, color, and sort of the operations that you're interested in, in looking at. Um, it is, like I said, recalculation of style and paint um, are potentially where these two are going to be different. Um, layout should not matter at all because, like I said, how the boxes are getting laid out is the, totally the same. Whereas um, the float techniques, how things are getting laid out are going to use different uh, you know, algorithms inside of the browser. And so layout might be probably the most different between um, some of the different float techniques. Um, maybe also recalc style, but there should be zero difference in paint time. Uh, Box sizing reset, I would expect there to be a difference um, in recalc style and layout, not in paint. Um, and attribute class selectors, the only difference should be in recalculate uh, style, but layout and paint should be totally the same. So um, that's probably a little bit more specific way. Um, I'll also point out web page test. So web page test you know, has a nice, uh, people use it a lot for network testing, but um, one of the things that you can do when you're setting up a brand new test is, uh, if you are recording with Chrome, you can ask it to record a DevTools timeline. And when it does that, it captures all the things that we just looked at, and it gives you a nice chart like, like this. Um, and so it's basically going to summarize all the activity that happened inside the browser during the page load. Um, and so I actually just ran you know, two, two page loads. Um, and I'm just toggling between them now, and there's not a significant difference in what's happening, um, but it is changing a little bit. Web page test is a nice kind of way to have a clean room testing environment if you want to do this for real um, and test some of these things and see what the differences are across runs. Um, it might be a little bit more, uh, more precise than your own machine if you have like Chrome extensions in there. Um, those can muck with your results pretty heavily. Um, and that's about it. So uh, pretty cool stuff. I mean, the, the, the important thing here really is that uh, in doing any sort of performance testing, um, opening up the timeline and identifying what your bottlenecks are. Um, on a general page, um, I would not expect uh, you know, background versus background color to ever, ever be anywhere near a bottleneck. Um, the difference of this, as far as the time it takes your page to load and render, is always going to be beneath 1%. Um, but to be honest, I, I don't think I can say the same thing about how you lay out the entire page, like with the, the specific layout technique. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, but using the timeline is definitely the best way to identify what your key bottlenecks are when you're laying out a page. Perhaps the, the biggest cost is, is not recalc style, but it is layout specifically. That happens a lot. Um, or other times, when you're scrolling a page, um, your biggest concern might be paint. Um, and so that's a case where you, you want to start investigating other things. But that's basically what you want to be looking at. Um, and hope that helps. Cheers. <laughs>